Hey guys, this is Bruce and welcome to another episode, a short episode of Combo Courses. And if you guys didn't know, I've got tons of discounts, free stuff. I got a book for 99 cents right now as we speak. Go to combocourses.net, link in description below, check it out. Let's get into this. So as usual, Monday through Friday, what I like to do is go through people's comments because that's kind of you know, only time I get to do it. So I'm just going to go ahead and deep dive into this. Let me see. I've got a couple questions here. And let me just, okay. Somebody said, hey, I'm starting a class on PCI DSS and want to know if your book would help. I've got a book on NIST 800 and I've got a course on NIST 800 as well. And they said, I do want to learn NIST framework after I take the class. So no, this book that I have, doesn't let me see if i have it here because i have a hard copy of it no i don't have it on me right now unfortunately but if you go to amazon or if you go in the link description below you can buy it directly from me or directly from amazon if you happen to have some kind of a deal with amazon it's all on there but uh i'll leave the description in the in a uh, link in the description but the book is breaking down the nist 800 and it was really from the perspective of an information system security officer from a cybersecurity person who's got to get the organization through the security uh, to a certain level of security posture. And so that's what it focuses on. It doesn't go into P PCI DSS at all. I am I, I am going to publish a book on PCI DSS compliance, but that's like months away. I'm, you know, it's going to take me a while to, to get that one together. So that is coming as along with the HIPAA book and other things that are in security compliance is really my main focus because I've done some of that stuff before. So that book's coming. But right now I'm focusing on my main. The main thing I do is NIST 800. So those are the books I have. And this one really doesn't talk anything about uh, PCI compliance. Uh, let me see. I got another question here that I really want to focus on. Uh, the other question was. Okay, here, here it is right here. This is the one I really want to focus on. So you guys can see this one. It's uh, They said, so, this is coming from Philip P. Or Phil P. He says, uh, so are, aren't you now an ISSM or an ISSE or ISO still with security clearance type job? Um, so right now, he says confused. Okay, so I just explained to you the differences between those and then tell you what I do. So right now, I'm an ISO, an Information System Security Officer. I work with an I Information System Security Engineer, and uh, I have a my manager is, is kind of like an Information System Security Manager. The differences between three is an, an, an ISSO is somebody who is, what I'll do is do meetings with the, the system administrators to make sure that they're installing or configuring systems properly in accordance with security controls that we have. I'm looking at security controls all the time, updating the the um, implementation statements in the system. I'm making sure all of our document is up to date. Those are the kinds of things I do. It's a lot of meetings. It's a lot of coordination for vulnerability management type stuff, doing plan of action and milestones. It's kind of like you're managing all the security that's constantly coming and going throughout the system. When there's vulnerabilities, we're jumping on to make sure that the vulnerabilities are getting put in place. We're, we're trying to figure out what's going on. Sometimes like you'll have 2000 vulnerabilities, you install them all, you know, have a team that installs them, but then there'll be like 50 that for whatever reason didn't get installed. So those are the ones I'll just focus on and say, okay, why didn't these 50 controls or 30 systems uh, not get patched. And then we have to dig into those and figure out why, what's going on. So to do that, I'll do research on my own, do some like analysis of this, of the, uh, the, of the actual data that we get back to make sure it's valid. Sometimes it's not even valid. And then if it is, then I'm like, okay, what's happened? And I'll get with the system team. And it's things like sometimes the, the, 
the hard drive is full, so it couldn't get the patch. Or sometimes the site is remote, so it's not, the system's not always online to get the, the patch remotely. And there's just all kinds of things that happen. And you got to have somebody go out. And, or sometimes you just disconnect the system and be done with it or erase it and get rid of it. So it just depends on like what the situation. But that's really what I do as information system security officer, is I'm main, helping to maintain the posture, the security posture of the system and that's a day-to-day -day job like that's a lot of meetings that's a lot a lot of documentation it's a lot of coordination it's not in this particular instance it's not hands-on but i've had been it's so positions where i was hands-on where i was literally going out fixing systems or setting up a, a system that's going to be a template for all the other systems i've done that before as an iso and isi is a little bit more technical. So an, an information system security engineer is somebody who's more hands-on. They're, they're gonna be doing things like making sure that the, they might do something like making sure the patch manager system, the actual system that a server that's putting out the patches are wor is working properly. They're gonna be more of like the infrastructure of the security tools that we use. So they might, uh, a lot, I'll give you an example. Like we had an issue with our, our uh our certificates and we we have to put these certificates on all these different systems and we had we called him in and said hey you know have you ever seen this before we're having issues getting this certificate on this or that system like can you help us out and so this dude is like a subject matter expert on like several different technical things and if he's not he'll go out and he'll spend his time to figure out okay what's going on he'll dig into that one technical aspect of our infrastructure that's kind of what an ISI does. And it kind of varies from sometimes they're more like an architect. Sometimes they're usually more like an engineer where they're in the weeds, li literally fixing some of the infrastructure type security tools and, and uh, platforms that we have or figuring out what's going on with the whole the whole uh, environment um, from a technical aspect. And is some um, an information system security manager typically is somebody who is managing someone like me. So they're they're usually over a bunch of different ISOs. And we don't call, in our organization, we don't call an information system security manager, but that's exactly what they, we have another name for it, but that's exactly what they are. So there's like five of us under this one dude and they're not in the weeds on, they're smart enough to be in the weeds on all that stuff. They understand like what's going on, but their main role every day is making sure that we have all the tools we're that we that we need to do our job. They're making sure that we are doing our timesheets, stuff like that. And then they're making sure that uh, we're doing what we're supposed to do on a daily basis. If there's plan of action milestones or vulnerabilities that are kind of going crazy, they might jump in and say, "Hey, like, what's going on? Can you tell me what what's what the problem is?" And they're talking to the customer a lot. They're talking to our customer. They're talking to upper level management, like C level execs and directors. And then they're they, that the information that they need to get us to us. They'll tell us, hey, you need to do this training. You need to do this or that. So they're managing us. That's most of their job. I'm, as an ISO, I'm managing the vulnerabilities of the system. I'm making sure that the, the security posture is a certain level. And then sometimes I'll reach out to an information system security engineer to, to make, to, to uh, if something's not working properly. Um, and then your other question was, uh, do I... I think your question is, do I still have a security clearance type job? Um, in this particular position, uh, I have a what's called a public trust, which is not officially a security clearance. It's a uh, <laughs> they call it a security clearance, but it's not like an official security clearance. That would be like a security uh, a secret clearance or a top secret clearance or some, there's some other ones above that. But I have a public trust. We don't we don't have secret information or classified information in our environment. We do have sensitive information, you know, P PII type information and things like that we have to work with. But to answer your question, so officially, no, I don't have a security clearance type job, but I do have a public trust. The last job, like two jobs ago, I did have a, uh, a clearance type job at a public trust and a secret clearance or whatever that was active. So. Um, so, yeah, that's that's what I'm doing right now. I hope that that clears it up. But if you have any other questions, keep following me. And I, this is some stuff I talk about all the time. And if you're interested in going deeper in this and investing in yourself and taking the time to know more about this, go ahead and go to ConvoCourses.net, link in description, and it will tell you 
way more information. I've got books out there. I've got free courses. I've got discounted courses. Right now, I've got a book that, I mean, at the time of this recording, I've got a book that's 99 cents. It might even be free. Like, I'll change it up. They'll allow me to, like, put it at free sometimes to get reviews. So if you're interested in giving reviews, join my newsletter. Sometimes I give out free books to get a review from people. I'll say, hey, read this book. And if you like it, give me a review and then they'll go out on Amazon. But they got a free book out of it. Sometimes I even have audio books that I'll give out for free. So join our, our newsletter. Join us. Join this community. Tons of free stuff. And the best part about it, in my opinion, is that the community is even more knowledgeable than me. Sometimes I'll be doing these and somebody will jump on and they'll give advice to other people because that's the community that we have. So that's it, guys, for this one. I'll see you guys on the next one.